So after two years, Microsoft has gone back to the drawing board and redone the Surface Studio. Behind me is the Surface Studio 2. Today I'm going to tell you what's new, what's old, and what's great about this all-in-one PC that you really want but probably can't afford. Stay tuned. All right, before we get into the actual review, I just want to talk a little bit about Surface Studio because it's a kind of controversial device in the sense that we all kind of want one, yet we all can't afford one. And there's some weird things that Microsoft has done with this device, and they fixed a lot compared to the first version, and I think it's almost all positive, but it's still a weird device to review. For instance, I'm not really the target demographic, and I'm guessing you're probably not either, unless you're an architect, engineer, or professional artist who sees this for what it is, which is a ledger device which you can draw on and do things that a normal PC wouldn't let you. But if you're like me, you just like a really awesome PC, you really want that high resolution display. And well, you wanna know, can you game on it? So well, let's get to the specifications and I'll answer those questions for you. All right, we have to start with the display here. We're talking a 28 inch 4,500 by 3,000 resolution, three by two aspect ratio. Just an absolutely stunning screen if you've never seen this in person. Well, it's pretty much the best display you're going to ever see. Now, it is highly glossy. That gives you that really good contrast, which is supposed to be 22% improved over last year's model. And yeah, you absolutely notice it. The other thing you're going to notice this year is it's much brighter, up to 38%. I actually measured it at around 590 nits, which is very powerful for a desktop display, so it gets really, really bright. It's not HDR bright, so there are brighter displays out there in the market for desktop usage, but 590 nits with a full touchscreen and inking support, well, that's pretty crazy. And when it comes to color accuracy, well, it pretty much matches the last version. So you're talking 100% sRGB and around 90% Adobe RGB. So those are very good numbers. It's just, a, well, it's an excellent display and it'll show off too and when it comes to gaming. For a front-facing camera, you have a five megapixel shooter. This thing found on Surface Pro and Surface Laptop and Surface Book. It's an excellent camera. It gives you some of the best contrast and resolution. It is full HD video as well. And it's Windows Hello, so it allows you to do facial recognition, which again, like Surface Pro and Surface Laptop refreshes for this year, is significantly faster when combined with the new SSD on board. Well, this makes it super quick to log in and resume whenever you want to. We can't ignore the back of this device either. It's a little weird to point out, but this device actually looks phenomenal from the backside. Now, if you're like me, this will just face a wall, but if you're in an open office setting, maybe you're an architect or something, well, this looks super awesome. It looks just like a Surface Book 2 or Surface Laptop. You have the mirror logo here on the back, which is really nice, smooth platinum design. And then it comes down to those amazing hinges. So this is where all the research that went into this device came from. These are some really amazing mirrored hinges. So the mirrored effect is actually supposed to help reflect the light so that they kind of look in visible, don't draw a lot of attention. These are all very subtle things, but they were described to me by the engineers behind this device that they spend a lot of time on making sure it doesn't reflect the light back in your eye. It's super weird, but uh, it totally works. Very nice hinges and allows you, of course, to do this magic, which is dropping the display all the way down to use as a drafting table and just looks really good. You can also just do it one-handed. This is kind of magic. You don't appreciate it until you try it, but the physics behind that to make that happen, so you do it with one hand and still have this sturdy, so you wanna draw on it, well, it's pretty impressive stuff. All right, let's look at the ports here in the back. You do get four USB type A, so nothing new there. You also get a full ethernet. You get the AC plug as well. And this is new now for 2018 in the Surface Studio 2. You do have a USB type C port. Now it is not Thunderbolt 3, I should point that out, but it is very powerful and you can connect docks up to it, which is actually really useful because with those docks, well, you can power a lot more than you could with say just a mini display port, which is what was there in the first version. Next to that is a full slotted SD card and a headphone jack. Now, it is kind of neat to have all these ports and they are on the back, which is nice because they're hidden. It gives a very minimalist look. At the same time, well, it's hard to reach for if you do need them. Luckily, the Surface Studio 2 weighs around 30 pounds, so it's really easy to spin around and get access to them. And it's much easier if you do run a hub off of it. But yeah, not the most accessible port, but hey, it looks pretty awesome from the front at least. And one thing I want to talk about that is often overlooked with the studio is the speakers. You don't see any. There are no cutouts for them. They're all completely hidden. You do get four speakers in the display itself, two on each side. Those are the highs. And then there's sort of a subwoofer here in the base. It's actually very good audio. It is Dolby Audio 2.1, and it gives you very good sound. You can also connect external speakers up to it, but unless you're going to connect up some like real high THX certified type speakers, I would just actually stick with what's built in here. They're very, very good. And considering you can't even see them, well, it gives 
lends itself to hold minimalist look and contributes to the overall design and quality of Surface Studio 2. It's also worth noting, despite the really high price tag for Studio, well, Microsoft is throwing in a full keyboard here, so it's a $99 value, although you can get it on sale for $79. This is a Surface keyboard, it is full Bluetooth. It's a very good keyboard, actually. I still prefer the ergonomic, but this is a very nice, small, minimalist keyboard. You do get a $99 Surface Pen as well, of course, because, well, this is a pen-enabled device, and you do get a Surface Mouse, which, again, goes for around $50, so that's $250 of accessories in the box. It helps contribute to that high price, so just keep that in mind. You don't get that with a lot of PCs, so it's always nice to have. Now, if you're really into artistry, you'll want to pick up a Surface Dial. It is $99, though. Once again, you can often find this on sale. So this allows you to do all sorts of cool pen things, including bring up brushes and finer controls, depending on the app you're using. Each app has its own unique functions, depending on what you want to use. You can use it on display or off the display. And if you don't use it for drawing like me, because I can't draw for anybody, well, you can use this as a volume control or display brightness or other functions, including scrolling on web pages. So think of it as a universal knob. It's kind of cool to have. I wouldn't rush out and buy one, but if you have the extra money, it is kind of fun to use with the Surface Studio. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this PC here. After all, you want to know its specifications and features, and especially that processor. We'll get to that shortly. Let's first talk about the RAM and other good stuff here. So they are running DDR4 RAM, so I'm very excited about that. It's also very fast. It's made by Hyundai, which is kind of weird, but it is very good RAM. 32 gigabytes in this model here. You can also get it with 16 gigabytes, but that should be enough for most people out there. The other really good news here is going to be storage. So the original Surface Studio shipped with a hybrid disk, which sounds really cool, but it's really Really not. Almost everyone panned it, including myself, because it's a combination of an SSD with a traditional spinning hard disk, and it gives you really fast OS stuff, but really slow app stuff. Sure, you get a lot of storage with it, but the performance was terrible, especially for a device that cost over $3,000. Well, they fixed that this year, so now it is just built on SSD, and you can get up to one or two terabytes, which is really kind of cool. It's also very fast. So this is one area where the Surface team usually has some issues with the speeds, but I'm getting 3,000 reads on this one, 1,000 megabytes per second for write, which is actually very good for a desktop PC, and it helps make the overall experience very good. So I'm very excited about the storage here. I would definitely recommend getting to one terabyte, and if you're going to use this for a long time, splurge for that two terabyte option. Now, the other really big news here is going to be the GPU. So again, going back to the original Surface Studio, it shipped with the 965 or 980M. Those were mobile processors, mobile GPUs. And as I mentioned in those original reviews, it got your foot in the door for gaming, and you could do some real gaming with them, but it was not a really good experience. Well, that's all changed this year. So the entry-level version now ships with the GTX 1060, which is pretty awesome, actually. The model I have here is a GTX 1070. That's what it peaks out at. It has eight gigabytes of video memory, and it's a really good video card. So let's get to gaming. Can you game on this thing? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I play Destiny 2 on this all the time at 3,000 by 2,000 resolution at 60 frames v and it's a really, really good experience. You can actually play at full resolution if you want to, but you can get around 35 to 45 frames per second. Now, another interesting benchmark to keep in line with my original review of Surface Studio would be Gears of War 4. So on the original Surface Studio 980M, that's the high-end version, I was able to get around 50 frames per second at a full HD resolution and ultra setting. So again, pretty good. But compare that to this model, while you can do QHD resolution or 2160, I was getting 75 frames per second at ultra level. So you're going to get much better performance overall. I could play everything from Forza Horizon to, like I said, Destiny 2 to Doom, whatever you want, this thing will be able to handle it. A GTX 1070 is a very good GPU to have on board, and it's going to help, I think, a lot of creative people as well who do a lot of video processing. That is, after all, where most of the processing power is going to rely on this device, and, well, it works very well. Now, it comes to fan and noise. Well, actually, nothing's really changed from the last version, which is kind of interesting. So the fan noise can get pretty loud under heavy loads. So if you're going to be gaming a lot, you're going to hear a whooshing noise, I would describe it as. I would describe it as audible, but not annoying. And that's really important. Even if you're just basically using this as a PC, you will hear the fan slightly rushing through the device. But again, audible, but not annoying. It's no high-pitched noise or anything like that. Uh, I get around 45 decibels if you put your ear next to the device, and when you're using it just standing in front of it, well, it's around 40 decibels, which is actually pretty good. I should also mention that if you use Windows Mixed Reality, well, you can finally use it with Surface Studio 2. You will need to use a Type-C adapter from HDMI, but it works beautifully. I'm using the new Samsung HMD Plus, which just came out, and it works very well on here. I'm even able to run it at the highest spec for Windows Mixed Reality. It's just a really good experience, so if that's your thing, well, you're covered here. 
Now, when it comes to thermals, again, they're keeping in line here with the original Surface Studio. So at its peak temperatures, blasting out the side, if you're to do a temperature measurement, well, you're looking at 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 63 degrees Celsius, which is pretty toasty. And the device itself can get a little warm, but again, it's not really hot. You're not gonna keep your hands in front of it, but it goes to show you the thermal limitations that you're dealing with is such a small, compact device. All right, now let's get to the controversial part here, the processor. So it's an improved version. It's the Core i7-7820HQ, which is actually a pretty good processor. It's quad core, 45 watt. You would find this basically in the Dell XPS 15 from like a year ago. And that's sort of the problem here, that this is not the new eighth generation processors. Had they gone with that, we would have gone from quad core to hexacore. Now quad core versus hexacore may not matter for a lot of people just using this as a normal computer or for even gaming that much. But if you're gonna use this as an architecture for engineering or artistry, yeah, those extra cores actually do matter and it would have been really nice to have it. As to why Microsoft is not using the new 8th generation processor in here, we don't actually know and they haven't really specified. They have taken a long time to build this device and I imagine the testing and R&D that goes into the thermal restrictions and needed to accompany that, well, it takes a long time. And I also imagine they want to get this out for fall 2018 on the two year anniversary of the original studio. And had they gone through a hexacore, it might've pushed it back to spring. That's probably not a really good satisfactory answer, and I don't think there is a good satisfactory answer. When you're paying this much money for a device, the idea of having, say, new processors seems kind of nice, but on the other hand, Microsoft is taking their time with these devices and making sure the overall experience is good, and they do deliver that here, but I can't blame you if you would want a hexacore processor. I would too. Luckily, that GPU, though, makes up for a lot of it. Okay, let's bring it all in. So is the Surface Studio 2 worth it? Super, again, controversial question here. A lot of people are gonna point out, well, I could build a PC for it much cheaper than that. And it is absolutely true, but not one with all these features. So if you think about it, this has, for instance, built-in 2.1 sound into the display and the device itself, so you don't actually see any speakers. It also comes with a mouse, keyboard, and its pen built-in. You also get basically a 4K display that's touch and pen-enabled, and there really are no comparable devices out there that do this. Sure, you can compromise on all this stuff. Say you don't really need a high-resolution display or you don't care about inking or touch on a display. Well, yeah, you can then save yourself some money, but you should not be looking to Surface Studio 2 then. Obviously, this device is created for a niche audience, and that's actually okay. It's for a professional group of people who actually need something like this, and there's really not much out there on the market that meets their needs here. While you can build a cheaper PC, it's not gonna be as nice as this, nor it will be as all-in-one as this, and this is truly an all-in-one device. Now, I do wish it had a better processor in it, but at the same time, when you look at the thermals here and the size of that base, that base isn't much bigger than most laptops, and they're jamming a lot in there. Sure, there's no battery, but if they were to put more of a beefy processor in there, well, it would make the whole device a lot hotter and run those fans much louder. And considering you're supposed to work pretty close to this device, including leaning over it, well, you really don't want it to sound like a hairdryer. So there's some tough restrictions here that Microsoft has set for themselves in creating this device, but there's just nothing else like it on the market, and that's actually kind of cool. Now, I know the argument for gaming on this seems a little strange, but Microsoft did include Xbox wireless controller support. So yeah, you could connect up your Xbox controller, get rumble support and headphone jack support. And that goes to tell you that they did consider gaming on this thing, and it absolutely crushes it at gaming. Again, you can build a better device, you can get a better display too at a much higher refresh rate, but that display probably won't look as nice as this. And for me, it actually matters. When I play games on this, well, it just looks phenomenal. As to whether or not it's worth it, I don't know. It's probably up to you, but it's a really unique device. And I have to say this year's version actually feels like the price justifies it a lot more. Yeah, the processor could still get better, but between that GPU, the SSD, that increased RAM, everything about it just feels much better. And well, I happen to like using this device a lot. It will be using it as my main PC for a while. All right, so there's a quick look at the brand new Surface Studio 2. Now, if you have questions about this device, leave a comment below. Also, tell me how you want to see Microsoft improve it. I know what you're going to say. Just sell to the display. Well, maybe they'll do that eventually too, but for now, we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.